Good Wednesday morning. It's June 12th here, just a little bit before 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Michael Clark with BAM Weather and your latest weather yield outlook. It's Wednesdays, and so that means we update the thought process on the, the, the weekly, the sub-seasonal, and the seasonal forecast thoughts as we are getting in now to the heart of the growing season and, most importantly, our first a big heat wave, one of several, in fact, probably three that I see at least right now, and uh, we're going to get right into it. So share this with a friend, uh, send it to a friend, post it on your pages, whatever you got to do. Let folks know, follow us here on YouTube for the latest and greatest on the weather outlook here. So let's get right into it. First major heat wave of the season, severe weather uh, threat increasing in the northern plains. Storm cluster risks are increasing as well. Uh, a big storm front risk around the 22nd. That's going to come with the potential for a, a big storm system, severe weather, and a, a shot of cooler air to uh, uh, end the month of June, roughly. And it'll probably warm back up pretty quickly. We're watching for a major July heat wave and continued thunderstorm cluster threat. And I'll update the La Nina uh, forecast and the latest yield thought process as well. The soil moisture percentile index here from our Clarity platform shows places that continue to uh, run dry, if you will, or need the moisture. In the last couple of weeks, we, we've really kind of shut off rain here across portions of the eastern, uh, eastern grain belt, Indiana, Michigan for sure. We've seen a big improvement here, though, across the uh, western southern plains, Kansas, um, it's still dry, don't get me wrong, but we've seen big improvements. It's gotten very wet uh, uh, with a surplus in moisture here in the North Plains, which is nice. We've also seen big improvements too across Iowa, Dakotas, and Nebraska as well. All right, so um, we see where we need the rain a little bit and where we don't need it. And that kind of leads us into rainfall the last seven days. Again, as I've mentioned, it has gotten drier uh, we've seen less in the way of widespread rains for a big chunk of the grain belt here, especially the Dakotas getting into portions of Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, uh, western Iowa, most of the Dakotas, eastern Nebraska. Now, again, the last seven days, big rains across Kansas, Missouri. That's uh, certainly a very helpful rain here in eastern uh, Kansas, western Missouri, and uh, some rain, too, in western Kansas, panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. But look at this, the last two weeks... Um, the precipitation departures from normal, again, you can see in the last 14 days where it has suddenly gotten drier versus that 14-day that normal, all right? And a big, really, it's a big part of the country. Um, the pattern here has, has gone dry across the uh, central portion of the grain belt and then out east as well, um, and we've gotten noticeably wetter running with big surpluses from the normal the last 14 days here. And listen, I think this area here, take the rain you can get right now across the South Central Plains because I'm worried that shuts off here uh, relatively quickly in the next couple of weeks with the developing pattern that we see going forward. Okay, rainfall the next two days, we're going to have a severe weather risk, a storm cluster risk here. Uh, first of which, the severe weather risk is going to come out of the, the Northern Plains today. That's going to shift further to the east here tomorrow, bring the potential for some thunderstorms and some rainfall, okay, over the next uh, 48 hours. Locally, some heavier amounts not out of the question, pending how long the storms can survive as they evolve from, you know, southern Minnesota, uh, Illinois, Indiana. Portions of the area are going to get thunderstorms, some of them of which, again, could be strong to severe. In fact, here's a closer look at that severe weather outlook uh, tomorrow after, uh, yeah, tomorrow afternoon and evening. Uh, with your highest threat of severe weather coming across northern Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, and southeastern Iowa, possibly extreme southern Michigan there uh, in the mix as well. Rainfall the next seven days. Um, it, if anything, where areas could be under-modeled with rain would be across Indiana, uh, Illinois, eastern Iowa, with the storm cluster risks there. Um, but overall, the majority of the rainfall is going to come out of uh, or fall in Minnesota, uh, far southeastern Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin is the best concentration of rain, especially the most ensemble support for rain. Look at the Canadian prairie rainfall, too. That's going to come welcomed. Uh, the heavy rain and the uh, tropical threats here continue for Florida, 
potential development here off the coast, I think, is around 20 or 30 percent right now as it gets east of Florida. Nonetheless, it's uh, it's it's rainy, right? Uh, so uh, a lot of rain down there. Now, what we're going to watch here in the next the end of the next seven days and getting into the, the six to ten day is the development of a potentially significant heat wave. And that's where all this is going to shift. OK, the next 14 days from rainfall from normal. This is where the heat wave will start to develop. This is where the ridge, the upper level ridge will start to develop. You can see the model's idea of flow around that ridge uh, from the southwest and both from the northwest flow patterns. It doesn't mean that it won't rain in here. In fact, I think it can with a storm cluster or two, but it means that it could possibly be below normal rainfall the next two weeks. As the axis of the ridge shifts from the eastern U.S. down into the western or southwestern uh, uh, or southern plains, if you will. OK, so that's the idea with rainfall right now is it'll probably be in a, at, a, at a surplus here in the central U.S. Uh, but as this ridge moves to the west, it will start to shut some of that rain off potentially. This is a look at the, the threat for uh, one inch plus of rain the next 10 days. Where will that be? Where's the highest probability of seeing that? Well, it's kind of as I mentioned, Minnesota, eastern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska, Iowa. Wisconsin area here. That's your highest probability of one inch rainfall. Obviously, South Florida and the coastal areas of Louisiana and Texas running probabilities of some heavier rain there. And again, isolated lo locally heavier probabilities of an inch or more of rain across the Canadian prairies too, which is always welcomed. The two inch plus 10 day rainfall forecast is going to focus the highest confidence again across south, the southern half of the southern third of Florida running about a 60 to 70 percent probability in southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, northwestern Wisconsin for two inches or more of rain. There's probably about two billion bushels of corn grown right there. It's probably the most heavily densely populated area for corn growth in the United States. So that's obviously uh, beneficial for rain there in that regard at this time. Let's talk about our first major heat wave. This is the probability of a 594 decameter ridge uh, developing from the European Ensemble. That is nearly a 100% probability of that happening here uh, by the afternoon of June 20th. Okay, Big heat ridge, multiple very, very hot uh, mid-90, upper 90 degree readings. And out of the question, 100 degree readings down in, uh, across the south of the Ohio River for sure for a couple days as the axis of that ridge starts east and moves west. The core of the uh, strongest or, or, or biggest or departures from normal with heat will be centered over the eastern Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and Mid-Atlantic. In the 10 to 15, it kind of expands and starts to move west, but you can see where the focus of the most intense heat from normal will be um, as this heat wave starts to make its way uh, into the, the, the grain belt. So multiple mid 90 degree highs and possibly lower 100 degree high temperatures coming nighttime lows uh, in the 70s. So hot nighttime lows, not really, you know, perfect for um, growing conditions, if you will. All right. Um, in terms of the temperatures, this is a look at the placement of the ridge, the upper level ridge here by June 20th in the evening. You can see the 594 decameter ridge, the placement, and I want you to note the trough centered back out across the west and the Pacific Northwest. As this ridge starts to contract and move southwest and this trough flows up over the top, there's probably going to be a pretty nasty thunderstorm cluster or potential significant uh, risk for a, a duration of some sort to develop by the 21st through somewhere on the 23rd of June. Um, in fact, we looked into this more heavily, heavily based on that. You can see the retrogression there, the ridge. What that means is it kind of goes west and the heights subside a little bit. We have years, watch this again, where this happens that we've been able to analog and kind of give you an idea. 1998, 2012, 2016, 2022, these are some, some examples of some big durations that went through the primary uh, U.S. growing regions, uh, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, okay, the three I states. Um, one of them in 22 actually started in South Dakota, all right? Um, but you can see the analog support here 
for a very similar pattern. In fact, we analogued what that looks like the last 10 Midwest to Ohio Valley to ratio events, uh, really since dating back to, to 1991. And you look at that pattern, what it looks like. Here's your big heat ridge, okay? And you look at the troughing here. You look at the weather modeling, and you look at the troughing out west. It's very similar. And a little bit of a zoomed-in view on that look. You can see what happens. It's as that, that 594 decameter ridge starts to subside. You get that 591 to that 588 height line to stroll on through the area. And what happens is somewhere in here, uh, most likely I will draw the area I can I can do my best with. Somewhere in here, at this distance, is going to be at risk for a big cluster of thunderstorms. Could it be the northern half of this? Could it be the southern half of it? No clue. Uh, it depends on where the ridge ac axis is at the time, but I can tell you that the modeling is very similar once this pullback happens in that uh, being a big risk here by the 21st to the 23rd of June. We really need to watch that. Behind that, there could be a cool shot. Big storm moves through. The ridge goes from expanding to contracting, allows a trough to swing through on the northern end of this. And uh, there could be a cool shot before the next heat wave works in, probably as early as Independence Day or even before that. All right, possibly the end of June to start July. In fact, our latest week three and four forecast uh, show, calls for significant heat, uh, extremely above normal conditions favored to end June and open July. Based on a number of things, uh, primarily the uh, tropical forcing pattern and the angular momentum, um, it is uh, negative right now, but it's also forecast to continue to decline for the most part. Um, this period here isn't even really the most significant of the heat, I don't believe. I think that can arrive somewhere around the 10th through the 20th of July, and we're continuing to see this be a permanent feature for the month of July, where you have significant heat centered over the central or south central grain belt and an active flow pattern across the top, bringing hit or miss thunderstorm uh, chances, being uh, those coming with the potential to be damaging thunderstorm clusters, uh, the way that this pattern shapes up. Uh, when we look at years where we had this in similarities, the tropical forcing and the angular momentum, uh, we have years like 2022, 2012, 2010, and 1998, okay? Uh, those years featuring uh, Duratio's thunderstorm clusters for sure. You can see where the heart of the heat is focused in these years. Um, it, it's right here in the, in the grain belt, especially in the southern part of it. And then you can see the flow pattern. It's sloppy and it's hit or miss, and that's our outlook. All right, that's the flow pattern. That's, that's probably coming from the tropical moisture down here. Um, some are going to bode well in this pattern, some are not. And the ones that get rain, I think, in July, unfortunately, could come in the form of thunderstorms. This method is also backed up by the Pacific Ocean right now, being it's the top five strongest negative PDOs on record since 2000. It paints the same picture. The confidence is rather high in this regard. All right. Looking at the weekly Enzo update, this is also important. Uh, we continue to see the conditions of the La Nina develop. I want to show this one primarily today. This is the latest change in the sea surface temperatures. Note the warming in the eastern Pacific Ocean of the PDO, of the, of the, uh, the warming of the waters here. Now we're seeing kind of this wide body of warmer water, if you will. That is an indication and a support of uh, a developing ridge in the eastern Pacific that would favor a, a trough here with another ridge here and another trough and then another ridge. Uh, you kind of get this setup where you have, um, you're, 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 it's, it's, we, we call it circumglobal ridging, or it's just ridging everywhere. You get a ridge and a trough, and a ridge and a trough, and you get these intense um, uh, ridging uh, episodes to develop. The more warming we see in the eastern Pacific here, uh, and we see this region continue to do this, supports more ridging to happen in July. So significant heat and the potential for uh, thunderstorm clusters to ride the periphery of the ridge of that heat might be where only the only source of moisture may not be encouraging in that department, okay? So that's why our July outlook still looks like this. Um, no reason to change it right now. 
it's probably in terms of an energy demand perspective, a, a cooling degree day standpoint, probably the hottest July ever, possibly. Uh, as we're forecasting big, big CDD number 395, it wouldn't shock me to touch 400. I, we'll see. Uh, but a lot of a lot of signals towards hot heat right now in July, and a significant heat wave I think that could grip from the fourth to the twentieth or so of July is certainly on an, uh, on the table here. Okay. Again, that precipitation pattern is going to come with the haves and the have-nots. You may get a storm cluster to roll through and give you rain, but it may bring a lot of wind. Okay. So with all this in mind, with the idea of heat, warm overnight lows, storm clusters, um, some of these folks getting late planting in, in less than ideal conditions, it continues to weigh against our yield outlooks. Um, 2012 has to be factored in for the July pattern. It doesn't mean we're projecting a 2012 uh, repeat of the growing season, but characteristics of heat and lack of moisture have to be considered in the month of July. And right now, the, the latest overall July uh, uh, analog research suggests um, most of the years are below trend. Even if you take out 2012, you're still about two points below trend. On, on the forecast right now. So we continue to favor a low trend corn yield. Um, in fact, the latest uh, research, even with soybeans now, kind of indicates the same thing. A lot of indications are that um, not only these the heat, the storm clusters, uh, but moisture concerns into August could, could, could linger as a ridge may, may establish further north, something that we'll continue to watch in the coming days. But that's the latest. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Let us know. Again, share this with a friend. Thanks for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for the latest, and we'll talk to you soon.